today I'm going to talk to you about physiochemical drug calculations and how to determine how drug-like any one of our molecules is. To do this, we're going to use something called Lipinski's Rule of Five. So I'm going to give a little bit of background on that, and then later on I'll show you how to actually calculate this using an online software that is free and available to use for everyone. So first, Lipinski's Rule of Five is a general rule that's used to determine the drug-like properties of a molecule, right? This is helpful in predicting if a molecule is orally active. So what that means is it doesn't tell any information about other forms of application, right? Injections or any other form. It only talks about oral and uh, oral application drugs. This rule involves a lot of pharmacokinetics, right? Um, the ones that we really talk about is absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Those are the ones that govern most of uh, what we're going to care about. And one really important thing to note is that this does not predict if a molecule is active as a drug. It helps predict how it acts in the body. That's what pharmacokinetics mean, right? So how it's absorbed by blood and cells and, and things like that, but it doesn't actually tell you any sort of information about whether your molecule does what you want it to do, whether it inhibits your specific enzyme, right? For that, we need other forms of software. So all this tells us is if it will act as a drug, not necessarily if it will be active as a drug. So there's a couple of big parts of, of this that we actually are care about. There's more than this, but we really care about these six. So first thing is log P. That is the partition coefficient between N-octanol and water. Effectively, what that is saying is that is how likely it is for our uh, molecule to be in an organic environment versus an aqueous non-organic environment, right? So the lower this value, because remember log is, is sort of inverse, right? So the lower this value, the more likely it is that our um, molecule will uh, be sort of, will prefer to exist in an organic form, right? So inoctanol is a fatty acid chain, right? So that is sort of our organic component. Then we have molecular weight, it's MW, and that is just saying, you know, how large our molecule is. You don't want something that's really big. Um, we want it to be relatively small, and that's so that it fits to the body better, right? Uh, then we also have hydrogen bond donor, which is H sub D, and hydrogen bond acceptor, which is H sub A. And these are really, you know, they're pretty self-explanatory. Hydrogen bond donor is anything that has a sort of hydrogen that is directly attached to a, uh, a electronegative atom. So a, an NH or an OH type um, hydrogen because that is more likely to create a, hydro, a strong hydrogen bond. And then hydrogen bond acceptor is those free electronegative atoms, so O's and N's, that are not bonded to hydrogens inside of your molecule. And those are much more likely to accept hydrogen bond, ex, uh, hydrogen bond. Because remember, uh, the things that accept hydrogen bonds are fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, right? So the reason it's called the rule of five as you can see, is because all of these values are a sort of a multiple of five, right? So you want your log P to be lower than five, right? Because the lower this is, the more likely it is to be uh, in an organic environment. You want the molecular weight to be less than 500. You can sort of think of that in terms of column chromatography, right? Size exclusion. The bigger things, if, if it's really large, and this also comes down here to volume. We'll talk about that a little later. If it's really large, it's not really going to um, fit through all of the nooks and crannies of the body, right? It's, it's going to be hard for it to distribute itself across the body and through the intracellular matrix. So you want that to be relatively small. And then you want HD to be less than 5 and HA to be less than 10. And the reason for that is because there's tons of hydrogens across the body, right? Uh, and there's tons of things that can accept hydrogen bonds. And if you have too many donors or acceptors, your drug can sort of get caught, right, in, in sort of some, by some other molecule that might bind to it or might 
slow it down, right? Because hydrogen bonds are extremely fast. They uh, are created and dissolve very fast. So it could just slow your molecule down. So you want those to be there, but you don't necessarily want them to be too present, right? Then these last two values that we have here, we have PSA and V. So PSA stands for topological polar surface area, right? And we want this to be relatively small, right? We want it to be less than 90 angstrom squared. And this is specifically for aromatase, which is why it's down here. Because this is sort of a measure of the entire surface. If you think of there being sort of a cloud surrounding your molecule, we want the entire surface of that. There are going to be some sections of that that are polar. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But if there's too much of that that's polar, it's going to be really hard for that to cross through um, the cell membrane, that sort of hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic sections, right? So we want that to be very um, small, right? So less than 90 angstrom squared for aromatase specifically. And then volume, we want that to be less than 300 angstroms cubed. And this is the total volume of your, the, the total 3D space that your molecule takes up. Now, why is that? So let's look here. So this is the aromatase active site. So you see this sort of wireframe purple area here. This is where your molecule actually exists inside of the aromatase protein. And one of the things that is very important here is that the binding pocket is only about 400 angstrom cubes in size. So if you have anything that's above 300, right, even 350, um, and especially anything above 400, it's going to be really hard for it to fit and rotate in that pocket and find the most optimal configuration, right? So what you see in this picture is um, andrestinbion, um, which is sort of our natural substrate that we kind of base our calculations off of. And you can see that that has a volume of 286 angstroms cubed and it has a PSA of 34, right? And you can kind of see what that polar surface area kind of looks like over here in this cloud, right? You have uh, these polar regions here of this pocket and you have the rest of that is hydrophobic. So if you have too much polar regions, it's, it's going to interfere with the absorption of your molecule. Um, so now you can see this is sort of a table of values that we've pooled together, right, of various compounds. So this is your standard. This is a, um, another standard. And then this is some molecules that we have seen in the past, right? And you can see sort of comparatively their, um, their P, their log P values, their molecular weights, their HA, their HG, their GPSA, and their volumes. And another thing to note over here is their IC50 value. We're not going to get into all of this later. That will be talked about a lot more in the video on using sigma plot. But this basically, the lower this value is, the more effective your drug is at inhibiting your enzyme, right? So the lowest values here are actually the best ones, right? So you can actually see that something that has a pretty good log, pretty and fits all these values, all of these fit within the range, they have very good IC50s because they're all very low. Right? So now we're going to actually show you how to actually calculate these properties. So this is what the website looks like. This link right down here at the bottom will take you there. So let's go ahead and I'll pull it up here. It will pull up in a window. So here is this website, right? When you first log in, it'll probably look like this. So you can use this drawing software to draw out molecules if you'd like, right? So you can add functional groups here, and there's actually a, a button for more functional groups. Um, and you can add single bonds as well if you want to and, and sort of draw out your molecule. Double bonds. If you need to draw a chiral center, you can do that here. You can add specific atoms to it as needed, right? So if you need the nitrogen here, you can do that as you need to. And then if you need to delete a specific um, piece of your molecule that you drew, right, you can use this X button. And if you want to clear the entire screen, you can just hit this sort of white square and that clears all of it, right? Now there's an easier way to do this. If you think about it, you usually have a big document 
um, that Dr. Ma has prepared that has all of the compounds you need on it, right? So this is one such document that we used a while ago. And this has a whole bunch of molecules on it. And we don't want to draw each one of these individually, right? So one of the things you can do is you can copy what's called the SMILES code, right? And there's a couple of ways to do this. So the first thing you need to do is whatever molecule you're using, so we're going to use this one right here in the middle, you want to make sure that you select the entire molecule, right? And you have to be careful with ChemDraw because sometimes uh, if you only select part of it, you won't actually pick up all of the molecule. A good way to tell if you have all of it is if you select the entire thing and then move it, you won't have any sort of those bonds stretching like this, right? Another easy way to do that is if you just have the select tool selected and then double click on any part of the molecule, it'll select everything that's attached to that. And you see as I move it, there's no stretching or anything like that. The whole molecule is coming with me. That means that I have selected all of it. So now there's two ways to get your SMILES code, and they're pretty similar. The first is you come up here to this Edit tab at the top left. You click Edit, and then as long as this is selected, you can come down to Copy As and click SMILES, right? And that'll copy it as a SMILES code to your clipboard. Alternatively, you can right-click on your molecule, and then down here in Molecule, it's the same process, Molecule, Copy As, SMILES, right? And that way you have sort of that code in your clipboard. And so you come back to this website, control V, and that is the smiles code. And you just paste that into there. And then you hit this button that says calculate properties. Give it a second to calculate. And then it'll show you all the information you need to know. A good thing is always to double check that it has drawn it out correctly. If something's wrong, you might want to go back. If you click the back button, it actually will pull that drawing backwards into this uh, thing. So if something's wrong, you can click change or delete it, right? So that's always a good thing to test, right? And then it tells you all the information you know. So it tells you what your um, log P value is. It tells you about your PSA, your TPSA. It tells you the number of atoms you have in your, in your structure, your molecular weight, this NOH right here, uh, or this NON, this is your number of hydrogen bond acceptors, right? So this is at five. The NOH, NH, is number of hydrogen bond donors. And so this is one, right? And then it also tells you down here at the bottom your volume. And all of this information is very good. And, and one of the things you can do is when you're making a poster, if you have some very interesting molecules, you can make a table that looks sort of like this, right? So this is a poster that was made a while back. And you can see one of the things that is really nice to do is in this top row, putting the Lipinski's rule of five. So you can very quickly go down this list and see if anything violates this list, right? So you can see, oh, um, all of these things are within, um, the acceptable range, right? And you can see if things are getting close and not, and you don't have to keep referencing that rule. So it's a very good method to put the rule of five here at the top. And one thing you may wanna do is actually go ahead and put the less than 90 and the less than uh, 300 here in the TPSA and, and volume as well. But that's it, I hope this was helpful in learning how to calculate the physiochemical properties of your molecule. Thank you.